Now let's apply the Laplace transformation to a very specific circuit. We've got a voltage source on the left hand side here and a switch in the circuit which is getting closed at the time zero. The voltage source looks like that. We want to investigate the circuit for three different resistances. For one kilo ohm, for a hundred ohm resistor, and for 10 kilo ohm resistor. So that is gonna be a parameter that we're gonna change later. And the source is going to charge a 22 nanofarad capacitor through this resistor when the switch closes, but we are not applying a jump to it, a step function to it. We are applying first a ramp that turns later on into a constant. We also got some timing here. So the ramp turns into a constant after 30 microseconds and the voltage is peaking at 5 volts. Furthermore, the initial voltage across the capacitor is 2 volts. There are various properties from the Laplace transformation that we are going to apply here. Let's start out first with having a closer look at this voltage here. Now the voltage was not a perfect unity step scaled up to 5 volts. We first had the ramp ramping up to 5 volts over the first 30 microseconds and afterwards it was flattening out. Therefore we can combine the voltage source, the original signal that we had, with the pink one. So that's the ramp, the 5 volts ramping up to the 30 microseconds and afterwards we compensate with another ramp, just ramping down and add that one to the pink one. And we have the same derivative, the same slope, just with a negative sign in front of it. And we need to delay the orange waveform by the 30 microseconds so it doesn't hit in before. That means that the resulting signal from that V1 and V2 will be our original signal that we have seen from the last slide. The only difference from the one from the last slide is that we actually do have a Laplace representation for the pink signal, the V1 here, in the frequency domain. And we also can express the orange signal with the rules from the Laplace transformation. Next, we're gonna analyze the circuit how it behaves after the switch closed, so at time T0 and beyond. We have Kirchhoff's voltage law being the source voltage here on one hand side of the equation, which is equal to the voltage across the resistor being represented here as the resistance times the current through the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor just simply being represented here as the second term, adding that capacitor voltage up. Now we have investigated the source voltage already on the previous slide and everything about it is given. The capacitor voltage is exactly what we want to know. So the remaining unknown in here is the current in the loop. And as the current that is flowing through the resistor is the same current flowing through the capacitor, we can use Ohm's law applied to the capacitor and insert that in the equation above. That leads to the differential equation down here, with the only unknown being the capacitor voltage. So we can already start putting in the source voltage from the previous slide, V1, which was the orange waveform, and V2, which was the pink waveform, but also expressed as a V1, just with the delay of T1 and the negative slope in the equation up here on the left-hand side. Inserting the time domain functions that we found on the last slide, leaves us with the specific parameter in the next step. The right-hand side of the equation is unchanged from equation 100 above. 
Now we had a differential equation at hand in the time domain. And as we would need to differentiate and integrate in the time domain to solve for the capacitor voltage, we can transfer the whole equation over in the S domain by applying the Laplace transformation indicated here by the Laplace operator. And then we can solve it simply by multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. The two parts from the source signal are transferred into the S domain as a ramp function, therefore one divided by the complex frequency S squared. And we have the slope being the V peak divided by T1. And similarly, the pink part with the negative slope and with a time delay in the frequency domain modeled by the multiplication of an exponential function. On the right hand side of the equation, we had the two constants RC multiplied with the derivative of the voltage of the capacitor. The derivative of the voltage of the capacitor is the multiplication of the voltage of the capacitor in the frequency domain with the complex frequency S. And then we need to subtract the initial value, which was, remember, 2 volts. And at the end of the equation, we had the additional summation term of the voltage of the capacitor in the time domain, which due to the linearity principle of the Laplace transformation simply transforms over into the frequency domain by also adding the voltage in the frequency domain to the rest of the equation. Now we can solve the equation in the frequency domain for the voltage across the capacitor, which shows up here and there. So one of those terms is multiplied by RC and S here, which shows up down here. And the other one just stands for itself. So at the end, we're going to have it here. The source voltage is represented by those two terms showing up in the next step down here. And we are left with the initial voltage of the capacitor here, which also gets multiplied by RC and shows up in the next step of the equation here. Now we can reorder this equation a bit and define our function fs in the frequency domain, which shows up again here and there. But in these two cases, it's one time scaled with division of an s square. So we can extract it like that. Here it's also divided by the s square. And furthermore, it is multiplied with the time delay in the time domain means an exponential multiplication in the frequency domain. And we have two constants, which are the same, being in front of the two terms of that equation. Due to the linearity principle of the Laplace transformation, we can transfer the first one, the second one, and the third term here back into the time domain by its own. And as we already identified, they are related to each other. Fs is the most simple one. Then we have another one, which is a modification of the original one. And then we have a third modification, which is another added modification of the first term over here. Now transferring the first term back, the function Fs in the frequency domain, is simply looking it up in the table we previously had from the Laplace transformation properties. And we can define our time domain signal of Fs, which is an exponential function with the characterizing time constant of the circuit, R multiplied with C, in the argument of the exponential function. Now the rule about dividing with the complex frequency S in the frequency domain was equivalent to the integration in the time domain. And as we're doing it two times in the frequency domain, we also have to integrate twice 
in the time domain. Now notice that I've changed the variable for t here. So in here I'm using tau and then I first integrate over the variable tau from zero until theta. So the result of the inner integral is then getting integrated again over the now independent variable theta. And we start that integral at zero and end it at time t, which is the same t that we used in the other inverse Laplace transformation here. Now doing all the math leaves us at the end with the final result for that part of the signal with the equation down here. We have the same exponential function as we had in the function f t up here, the signal in the time domain. Now this time weighted with the square of the characteristic time constant. Then we subtract the square of the characteristic time constant. And once more, the characteristic time constant RC of the circuit is getting multiplied at the end with the linear function represented by the factor of t here. On the last slide, we found the inverse Laplace transformation of the uppercase letter f as a function of the complex frequency. We also found the inverse Laplace transformation for the same one divided by the complex frequency squared. And now we need the same one again, just shifted in time by the multiplication of the exponential function. And the shift in time in this case is represented by multiplying with the unity step shifted in time and also changing the integral limits of the last interval. So that means the result is zero for all times before our time t1, that was the 30 microseconds when the source actually changed from a ramp to a constant. And otherwise we get the same result as we had on the slide before, with the only difference that the time as the independent variable is now shifted with the time t1, which was the 30 microseconds, to the right side of the time axis. Now it's a matter of reuniting those inverse Laplace transformations with their respective weighting factors from previous. So the orange one was the first one we transferred back into the time domain. The purple one was the second one. And finally, the time shifted version was the third one showing up here. Before putting in the numerical values, we can simplify that equation by rewriting it and reorganizing it into the final result down here. And at the end, we can use that equation to actually visualize the results for the three different resistors that we were interested in here, the one kilo ohm, the 100 ohm, and the 10 kilo ohm. And you can see that the smaller the resistor is, starting out with the 100 ohm, we actually first get a dip from the initial value down to the source voltage where the source voltage started out at zero and was ramping linearly up to five volts until 30 microseconds. And then it stabilized at the five volts and continued as a constant from there. For the other extreme, the capacitor, which initially was charged for two volts, doesn't discharge into the source voltage as the resistance is slowing down the current. But on the other hand, the resistor is also preventing the voltage later on to rise faster. And the one kilo ohm resistor represented by the red graph is somewhere in between. Originally, the capacitor voltage takes a dip as the source voltage is lower as the initial value of the voltage of the capacitor but then it rather fast charges all the way up and follows the source voltage 
until it converges at the end to have the same 5 volts as the source voltage is providing. Now there are a couple of exercises for you to practice the Laplace transformation on different signals. An offset with an overlay of an exponential function, a sine wave, and an impulse and a step function overlaid with each other. And furthermore, a DC offset with an exponential function and a step function, so a unity step and a sine wave.